Next into the tank is a business started by a viral hit. Hi Sharks, my name is Eugenia and I'm from San Clemente, California. I have to apologize, my business partner isn't here yet. He couldn't keep track of time if his life depended on it. Can't even get himself dressed in the morning sometimes. Huxley! Huxley, come on! Come on, buddy. Come on. Good boy. What? What is that? <laughs> Don't be afraid. This panda is domesticated. I'm Eugenia, and this is Huxley the Panda Puppy. We're here seeking $60,000 for 20% of our company, Pandaloo. Our panda puppy costume transforms your pet into the perfect walking teddy bear. Now your dog doesn't have to be just a dog. He can be a turducken of cute. Have a look. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, poor dog. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That is sick. That is so sick. Not only does the panda puppy costume epitomize the magical cuteness of a walking teddy bear, but it's also engineered for the perfect fit. Your pet wears the costume like a hoodie, with the front legs through the lower bear legs. And unlike those cheap Velcro costumes, the back adjusts to your pet's neck and chest girth. <laughs> that dog gonna have issues though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. People are going crazy for this little panda. He's received more views than Beyonce's last music video. How many views? Over 140 million. Wow. Get out of here. It actually went viral by accident. <laughs> I had a store in the theme of pandas and um, made a video just for fun on Halloween, and it just went nuts. So we started with pandas, and now we have the panda puppy friends. <laughs> I also brought samples for each of you. Would you mind uh, holding Huxley for a second? Oh, okay. Aww. Someone gets to hold the panda. He's and you can take him out if you like. Hi. Mr. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eugenia, this is good quality. Thank you. Yeah. Is it possible to put Huxley in this one? Sure, yeah. <laughs> So do you need a small rat-sized dog, or can you have a larger dog? <laughs> they can be sized to fit larger dogs. That's part of what I tried to make sure I designed it for, was to fit a variety of dog shapes. But you know, what's your background? Well, I'm from San Clemente, California, a little beach town. My parents immigrated here from Taiwan. So I went on, did well in school. I got my master's in computational science, my bachelor's in math and applied science. I um, was pursuing research in computational neuroscience at the Salk Institute, where I use genetic algorithms to optimize a neural network. I also teach math. And you do this. So I graduated during the height of the recession. Since I graduated, I have been stringing together three, four, five part-time jobs. And so that's what really drove me to start this business. Have you sold any or taken pre-orders? Yes, or I'm actually in the middle of the manufacturing process. They'll be ready in about one month. What are your costs? It's about $4 landed, depending on the size. And then what do you charge? What's the retail? I've been uh, posting the retail price at $39.99, but- Whoa. Damon, I researched the largest costume manufacturer in the world, and they actually have costumes that are animal themed as well. And their price point was about the same, actually, for a far less quality of product. I think that's a so, perfect price. All right, well, I created two sizes so far. Aww. Uh, not quite as good as the panda, but still good. So right now you're taking pre-orders, correct? Yes, just very quietly. And how did you do that, though? Pandaloon is my online store. We've been in business for about three years. Um, we do about 100,000 in revenue every year. What do you sell? We sell just apparel, gifts, a lot of things with pandas, some things without. So Eugenia, would we be buying a portion of Pandaloon, which you currently already have, or this new concept of the costume? I went ahead and bundled it all together because I know that obviously I don't have, you know, an impressive sales figure to show you of these costumes, but I do have proof that I can sell $300,000 worth of inventory over the lifetime of my business. I've been profitable since my very first year. I've done it all myself. Okay, 
What exactly do you need the money for? In order to go ahead and expand my costume into a line, I would need to have the inventory ready for this Halloween. So in order to do that, I would need an investment of a bare minimum of $60,000 to get most of these SKUs to meet their minimum order quantity. So, Gina, I'm fascinated. It's a heck of a story. And obviously, I, I found the outfit, to say the least, intriguing. But I have to be honest with you, I've never really understood people that dress up rat dogs in outfits. It's just bizarre. I'm not suggesting you are. I'm just saying I'm out. OK. OK, I think you're phenomenal. I was more interested in the neural network side of it. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, I think you do great. It's just not a fit for me. So for that reason, I'm out. And Eugenia, I'm sorry. I just don't see a huge market for this. I'm out. Eugenia, I think the fact that we all almost curled over laughing, I think bringing that joy is, is evident. I have an offer for you. I'll give you the 60000 for 35%, and I'm going to donate 10% of my 35% to animal charities. So, Eugenia, I'm going to make you an offer. I like this, and I like you. Three sharks are out. Eugenia has an offer on the table from Damon for her pet costume business, Pandaloon. But Sarah is also interested. Eugenia, I'm going to make you an offer. I like this, and I like you. Oh, you're kidding. I'm not kidding. OK. I'm going to match Damon's offer. I'm going to give you $60,000 for 35%. I have more that I can bring to the table with my platform and all of the women that I'm reaching out to. And I think that most of the people that are going to buy costumes for their dogs are women. I think you're special. I can tell that you're going to make this work, so. Thank you so much. I yeah. really appreciate that. So you have two great sharks, two great offers on the table. Would you ever entertain a deal together? Are you willing to give away more equity? Yeah, yeah. I'd be open to that. I'll be very honest. I. I have, I have respect for Sarah. I don't know her history here. She probably can add a massive amount of value, but I think I'm going to ride with this alone. I'm going to stick with my offer. Eugenia, you got to make a decision. David, I know that you are an awesome person to work with in the pet market. So I would love to accept your offer. All right. Yeah, you made me beg for that. I'm about to wear the panda outfit. Not Thank at all. You. Thank you so much. So crazy. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Next up is a product that the entrepreneurs hope will become a popular Halloween tradition. Hello, Sharks. My name is Rob Boulay. And I'm his sister-in-law, Laura Riley. And, and we, we are Switch, Switch Witch from, from Salem, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Sharks, we are seeking $55,000 for 25% equity in our company. For parents, the scariest part of Halloween is too, too much, much candy. candy. Switch Witch is a children's book and doll that solves that problem. And the real magic is, it's fun for kids. Hey, guys. Hi. Uh, How is trick or treating? How is trick or treating? Oh, all right. Come on over wow, here. Wow, look at all of your candy. Wow. Go ahead, guys. Sit right down on the end of the bed. <laughs> right on the end of the bed. Hey, we're going to read the Switch Witch story. The sun goes down. It's time for bed. Go brush your teeth, you sleepyhead. Leave your sweets with your Switch Witch friend. When right, kind guys, goodbyes have all been switch said. Switch Witch is coming tonight. Which, which is coming, dump it all in. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, lie down for bed, guys. It's the way the switch switch comes. Go ahead. Lie right down. <laughs> <there. laughs> While you're asleep, these words will ring. You might, might hear your switch switch sing. Switch is am. Switch is in. Switch these treats for a special thing. When morning comes up with the sun. Guys, wake up. Look. Look. Your gift is good, good job, said and done. Something you'll love, it's sure to be. 
three cheers for, for Super, Super Switch, Switch, Switch Fun! Okay, guys, thanks so much. Good job, guys. Great costumes, guys. The shark with that. Down goes the shark. Good job, kids. Good job. Bye. Sharks, we know our product is fun for kids and a problem solver for parents. But we need your help in this magical journey to take Switch Witch to every household across America every Halloween. So let me get this right. You basically take the kids' candy, and when they wake up, their candy's gone. You're not worried about litigation? <laughs> <laughs> not when they see the gift they've received from what? their Switch Witch. So, yes. so the way the um, whole idea came up is my kids came home Halloween night 2013, and my wife yells to me, Rob, Rob, do we have anything to give the kids? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, Switch Witch is coming. I said, who is the Switch Witch? My kids threw every ounce of candy they had right up on the countertop. And we obviously didn't have anything for them. I actually threw them five bucks each. We took the candy away. I said, wow, what a brilliant idea. So Rob, let me understand the concept. Yes. I'm a child. I go yes, out trick-or-treating. <laughs> Thank you. I come home with my candy. I dump it. After all that candy I look forward to all year, and you give me this in exchange. <laughs> Actually, the switch which leaves. And we don't encourage kids to leave all of their candy. Oh, they only give up some of them. Well, some, they pick their favorites. And so you, but you give them the just parents. this, no. or you give them a gift? And something like this basically has to be viral on its own. Yes. It can't be forced. So Absolutely. I'm trying to, I haven't heard of it. My kids haven't heard of Never it. Never heard of it. Yeah, so that makes me concerned that it's not viral and it's being forced. What's amazing to me is when Yahoo did a thing on us on October 30th, our sales jumped like crazy. Unfortunately, it was October 30th. Um, <laughs> it ended up, our Facebook ended up going viral. The seasonality of this idea is brutal. And the next day after Halloween, no one cares. That's kind of like saying no one cares about Christmas because you have one day and then it's over. Rob, no, you but don't Christmas own the name huge Switch lead Witch. Up. You said the concept's been around for a while. Correct. So that's so why this is public domain. It is. So yeah, tell us um, by unit what it sells for, what it costs you, and then in aggregate what your sales are. Um, we ran into some trouble um, manufacturing. Uh, we, we did it all in the United States. Um, so we started at $29.95. It's a plush toy for $29, a little steak, right? With a book. Yeah. With, With a book in the packaging. And we priced it at Elf on the Shelf, Mench on the Bench. Mench on a Bench, Laurie. But where were you selling them and how many did you really sell? We sold 815 units in our first season. 52% was online, Amazon and our own website. We did 24% grassroots. I was out knocking on doors. I was in Salem, Massachusetts. We were at craft fairs. People loved this product. So your we sales sold were 24,000? Okay. Our sales were 15,700. Parents are having a hard time with it. Why didn't it take off? We feel it did. I mean, it was our first season. Um, we did those sales in one, is We nothing. did those sales in one month from grassroots. And look, the merit of reducing sugar is right on trend. However, for an investor, this is a non-proprietary plush doll with no brand, right? I've never heard of it. I think you should take the cue from what actually happened in Salem. In the old days, you used to burn the witches. <laughs> if I were you, I'd take this behind the barn and burn it, because I think it sucks. I'm out. Especially with the media that you had, guys. I mean, nobody ever walks onto the carpet and says, people don't like our product, right? Of course, we expect you to say and, and think that people loved it. But it didn't sell. It's not like you ran out of product. The big media push was the day before Halloween. Um, and, Still, and mostly the only venue for people to get the product was online. People were paying overnight shipping so after they saw the Yahoo article so that they could get it in time for Halloween. Laura, I, th I think, you know, for me, I love Halloween. I love the idea of getting free candy, so I, I can't get behind it. I, I don't see it. I'm out. Okay, thank you, Robert. We're really trying to build a, a whole family tradition around Look, it. We did a deal with Mench on a Bench, and there's so many days of Hanukkah, same as with the Elf, it's on the shelf for so many days, but here it's like a one night, one time thing. Whereas both of those models, it's many days and, and a lead up. This is so, too. I'm up. Thank you. Lori, yeah. can I translate what she just said? What she it, said is, your idea sucks. <laughs> well, guys, uh, Halloween is a 7.4 billion dollar industry. You just, just broke billion. the cardinal rule, you just broke the cardinal rule. When someone comes in and tells us it's just an enormous multi-billion dollar industry, suggesting that, oh, if we just get a tiny amount, we'll be okay. And you know what? I'm not buying it. I think you're introducing more stress than you're solving. 
I mean, because as a parent, and I have three young kids too, right? Where they're young enough, we're still taking them around. When they come back, we're grabbing the bag, throwing half of them away, letting them pick their best, and getting it done. I just think, you know, it, it's hard to push something forward and make it viral. It kind of has to be organically viral. So for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you, Mark. And then there was one. First of all, this could be a hobby, which could be great. You can grow into something big. Fubu was a hobby for me at first. I think it's a great hobby that may grow into something amazing. It just may be too soon for me, so I'm out. OK. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck, guys. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Good luck. When we came here, we thought for sure we'd get a deal. There's no question that the Sharks missed out on a great opportunity. We are going to be the next mention bench and out for the show. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur who believes there's big money to be made from big scares. Go, they're zombies. Hi, sharks. I'm Melissa Carbone from Los Angeles. My company is 1031 Productions, and I'm seeking $2 million in exchange for 10% of my company. Wow. 1031 Productions is an entertainment company that creates, owns, and produces live attractions in the horror space. Our most popular attraction is the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. And it is not for the faint of heart. Sharks, when you take our hayride, you are entering the pitch black woods where demonic forces, lost souls, psychopathic fun are waiting around every turn. <laughs> Just when you think the terror is over, think Again. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he likes you. Don't eyeball me. I will kick your tush back to Texas. Get him, Mark. Get him. <laughs> OK, Melissa, you know what's really scaring the crap out of me is your valuation. So $2 million for 10% imputes a $20 million value on this scary hair ride business. Tell us why you're worth $20 million. We do attractions all year long. We have the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, which is our seasonal attraction here in LA. 17 nights. We sell out every single night. We do about $1.8 million right now per October. Whoa. And... Whoa. Wow. 1.8 is really good. In 17 days. In 17, 17 days. days. We have another attraction called the Great Horror Campout that we just launched, which is a summer attraction. The Great Horror Campout is our way of not being a seasonal company. It is an overnight, completely immersive camping experience, horror themed. Oh, no. So it's 12 hours. <laughs> we, ba we, we take 2,000 campers, <laughs> we put them in tents, and we have an incredibly interactive experience oh, that includes amazing. everything from a hell So it's hunt. basically summer camp from hell. Yeah. yeah. 1.8 million in, at the end of the 17 days, what's left? It costs us $1.2 million to produce the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. So, so I'm left with 600,000 free cash afterwards? Yeah. I mean, it varies year to year because right now we're in a launching new attraction mode. We're launching a New York Haunted Hayride, which is what we're seeking some of this money for. The Great Horror Campout, we're launching it next year in 10 cities up the West Coast. And so therein lies the rub, right? Because they're very, very, very expensive to, to produce and create. Right, well, ca the campouts are cheap to produce. How much advertising and promotion do you do? We spend about $300,000. We do a ton of radio. My background is I, I ran Clear Channel Los Angeles for 10 years. So my wow. um, advertising, marketing, and one of and my other business partner is actually still with Clear Channel. So we know how to make a dollar go really far from a marketing how standpoint. How many unique individuals come through? The Hayride, yeah. we have, we have 50,000 people. We sell out every single night. So this year is our first year. We increased our max capacity to 100,800. We actually are doubling our max capacity this you, year. You sell out every night for 17 days? Every night. That's amazing. So can I extrapolate and say that the, it's going to be $3.6 in revenue this year? Yes, if we sell out. So that means this thing will generate just over a million bucks if everything works, right? Mm 
Huh? Okay, now, you're an intelligent woman. I'm trying to make the leap now. We have to get back to reality on your $20 million ask. Yeah. Let's give you a fair chance of making a million bucks before tax, okay? Yeah. Yep. That's about 700000 after tax. If I gave you a 10 multiple, you're worth 7 million bucks. How is it that I am going to pay 20 for a $7 million business? If everything goes right, mm -hmm. that's the horror story you've brought here. You've overvalued your business. We've had major entertainment companies in LA who have already given us offers to buy our company, and this is about what they're valuing it. Why are you such a greedy pig? I <laughs> Not greedy. I have lots of lots of high hopes well, for the well, company, and I want to grow where, where fast. Just because a Hollywood bozo horse. offered you a twenty million dollar valuation, you know what the horror show is? Listen to you argue about valuation all the time. But then why don't you just give her two million dollars and ten percent? I am projecting for the New York Haunted Hayride, which hasn't happened yet because it's the same model in LA. We're just plopping it but there. You haven't but done it yet. Hold let, on. Her go, let her go. Let her go. But go, hold ahead, go ahead. Geographically, it's a different model because it never rains in LA. Listen, I. I I don't agree that your risk analysis is correct. It never happens that everything you roll out is successful day one. That's ridiculous. For me, it is not hard to get lots of people to come to the attractions. The hard part is to make it a great experience so they want to come back. Look, this is all fun and games, but we're talking about money here. I can't, I can't get there. I'm out. Melissa, for you to come close to your projections for next year, Everything has to work perfectly all the time. I don't see you getting to those numbers next year. I'm out. For me right now, to give you $2 million, I feel it would take a really long time for me to see that back. So for that reason, I'm out. The risk is not as great as you probably would think. I mean, we will launch these attractions no matter what. I know that we can launch them faster by having this money. We can launch them now. I'm an expert in high octane scare. You are? Yes, I can tell you a way to do this much cheaper. Wear a piece of jewelry and walk around where I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> that will give you a high octane Fair scare. Fair enough. Uh, I would just have to insult you with my offer. Um, Go ahead, insult her. That's about what it's worth. <laughs> Throw the offer, yeah. Okay, well then, I'll give you $2 uh -oh. million dollars for 40%. Okay. Mark? Come on, Mark. Is that a yes or a no to him? Um, can I counter? Of course you can counter. Um, $2 million for 20%. I'll take that offer. Done. Really? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Go Mark. Do we have a deal? All take right. It. We have a deal. Wow. You should breathe. I love it. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'm wow. so Don't excited. Don't think about it. Holy cow. You owe me 5% for helping you on that. Totally. You can have free tickets to the LA Haunted Hayride. Thank you so Thanks, much, you guys. Melissa. Good Appreciate luck. Appreciate it. I don't know what just happened. Wait a minute, I lost out on a deal, come to think of yeah, it. Yeah, you just did. I think that the next generation of, of entertainment is experiential entertainment, where people get out of the house and go and get a unique experience. I thought for me to get my money back if I did that deal for two mil, I'd have to rise from the dead and look like that before I get it. You already back. have, Kevin. Are we excited? Are we excited? Mark on board, and $2 million, this is the biggest deal ever. I'm so excited. This changes the game for us. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Tank YouTube channel and ring the notification bell to keep up with everything that's bubbling in the tank.